What's up guys and gals, my name is Splattercat, we are here at the Nerd Castle today taking a look at the Alpha Toolkit for Undead Overlord. Now, if you're wondering about Undead Overlord, it's probably released on Steam. By the time this video goes up, it will more than likely have released on Steam, and you're probably here wondering whether or not you should check the game out. And so I'm going to preface this entire little series, it'll probably only be two episodes anyways, because there's not a whole lot of content in the game right now, but anyways... I'm going to preface by saying that this game, when it comes to early alpha, this game is in such incredibly early alpha that I would compare it sort of to... Oh, I don't know. A folk tale, probably. That would be the game that I would draw it to, where basically there's a tutorial in the game, and that's it. There's a tutorial, there's a skirmish map, and much beyond that, you're not going to get a whole lot of gameplay out of this game. And so now that I've said that, I feel like I've got the honesty on my conscience right there. I've gone ahead and I've disclosed pretty much the amount of content for the game. Let's get going and play with it, because the game does have some unique ideas. And so if you're planning on supporting this game by paying for it in early access, I would pay for it based on the fact that you like the gameplay concepts, not that you're expecting to get a lot of gameplay out of it right this second, as of July in 2014. And so let's go ahead, we're going to start with Mission 1, and I'll explain as we go along. Alright, and so here we go, take a good look at all of these people, we will be eating their faces very, very shortly. Just getting all up in that business, undead style. The Brian's Burger, we may swing through there, get ourselves a Coke. I don't know. Sometimes I like to wash down my human with a little bit of Coke every now and again. It's... It's, it's a vice. It is what it is. It's a sugar habit. Alright, pathetic meat sacks will suffer as we, the minds from Dimension Z, possess their flesh and extend ourselves into their infinity. Moohoo, ha ha, ha. Mission 1, born into a small town, so the, ba the basic premise of this game is that it's a real-time strategy game in which you take control of a zombie. Oh, it's going to force me to do this. Okay. So we're going to go over here, and we're going to go eat ourselves another human being. Now, you can click on your zombie, just as it said in the tutorial. If you double-click on your zombie, if you have, like, a big crowd of zombies, you can double-click on them, and it'll get all of them. Or you can rubber band box, just like you would in any other RTS. This right here in the top left-hand corner are basically your resources. It's like DNA. Whenever you eat somebody, it adds it to the DNA meter, and then you can spend your DNA morphing your zombies into new types of zombies so you've got like sprinters you've got runners you've got like these nosferatu looking things you've got the giant guys that look like they're from resident evil that have like meat cleavers and you know are naked wearing like an apron like they came out of a butcher shop all kinds of funny stuff oh this area this lady is dead <laughs> and these zombies i think are much more along the lines of the infected that you might see at 28 days later where they run around they kick they punch they get angry they're very raged out. Oh. Yeah, Barbara had a bad day. Barbara is now an unwilling member of the undead. Although she seems to be pretty enthusiastic about it now. It just took her a little bit. She had to get used to it. I mean, on first pitch, she wasn't okay with it. But now that she is a zombie, see, she seems remarkably okay with it. Now, if we click this thing over here, this allows us to go into devour mode or something like that, where you basically tackle and... Or no, that's what it is. Cannibal mode. It puts you in the mode where anybody you kill will not turn into a zombie. Instead, they're used as a feast for all the other zombies. And so, essentially, if you kill somebody with this thing flagged purple, the body on the ground becomes food, and all of the zombies will gather around and eat them to restore their health bars. At the bottom of the screen, you can see our collection of zombies right here. We can rotate rotate the camera using the Q and the E keys as it says and let's go ahead and smash this door down who knew that becoming a zombie would open so many doors forcefully all right so we've got to kill some people now what it wants us to do is it wants us to make a phone call it wants us to go over here and destroy the payphone because people are going to try and call the cops on us or something like that but first more brains and so off we go I like how they I like how they got their arms up just like Aah! just to accentuate the terrifying a little bit and I try not to leave people- oh, that guy's got a bat. Hold on. We can't be having that. Nope. Kill this dude now. There we go. Unfortunately, the zombie will not come back with a bat. That would be incredible if the zombie came back with a bat just raging out and roiding and destroying people with a baseball bat. But, we will not be getting our Jose Canseco on today. Instead, we will eat a few more people. Eat the medical staff! Oh, he's got a gun. Oh, hell no. This dude's got a gat. Luckily, they have to reload every now and again, so that gives you a pretty good opportunity to run up on them and eat their face. And so now that he's down, that guy will turn into a zombie. Let's go ahead and kill the people over by the phone. We are up to six zombies now. How crazy is that? And it's interesting. I feel like this game does have a lot of potential in the future just because there's no other RTS with a spawning mechanic much like this, where as you kill things, you get more units. But if you ever get down to your last zombie, you're toast. 
And so the missions, I think the first couple missions do afford a little bit of challenge. I don't know if we'll get to all of them in this first episode, but we are going to make the attempt. Oh, she went down easy. That's because we caught her while she was on the phone. She was distracted. I'm going to try and eat more people before I destroy the payphone because I know what happens when I destroy the payphone. I have pre-existent knowledge. This guy with the gun over here looks tasty. It might be because he's wearing a red shirt, which makes me think he's cherry flavored. Like I think about Star, like I think about Starburst, like the candy, you know, like whatever color people are wearing, that's what they taste like. Although I thought he had suspenders on for a second, I thought it was like it's a me, Mario. I thought he was running up in here trying to be the hero. I'd be like, no, you jump on my head, coins don't pop out. Sorry, pal. That motif is not going to run here in the zombie room. That's the one thing we haven't seen from Nintendo yet is a Mario zombie, <laughs> Mario zombie hybrid. God, ultra violent. I bet we can trust in some modder to do that. You can go all over the place. I mean, the maps are reasonably large. I mean, one of the things that will bother you is the fact that the human beings do run away, which can get obnoxious sometimes. And a lot of people are going to be like, well, duh, of course they run away. They don't want to get eaten. But, like, after you chase somebody, I remember the last time I played this game, I chased somebody around the building, like, three times. And I was like, all right, this is getting ridiculous. And I set up zombies, like, at one corner, one corner. And then that finally forced them out into the street. And it's just like, it gets, it gets a little bit crazy later on when you're trying to catch that one guy who just won't seem to go down. Especially when they've got more legs than you do. Like, if they got their Reeboks on and they're, like, rocking their Nikes, you are toast. There is no way you're outrunning a survivor. Especially once you get to like some of the military uh, military train guys later That's when you got to get the special zombies in and start taking them out because the zombies that are special Run a lot faster and also they get to go to that classroom where they watch the little mermaid play with blocks all day Which made me jealous when I was in junior high <laughs> I had a friend when I was growing up who accidentally got put in the special class like I don't know they mixed up paperwork or something like that and so they put him in the special class, and he said that it was a pretty awesome week. He got to sit there and just, like, watch Disney movies and, like, play with crayons, even though he was, like, 13 or 14. He said it was pretty dope. He said he didn't really tell them that he wasn't supposed to be there because it was way better than going to math class. Okay, and so once we're over here, only the zombies that are wounded will go after these meat patties. Let's kind of clear people out and see if we can maybe, like, this guy right here. There you go. Eat those. Eat the burgers. Mmm, delicious barbecue. For zombies. Typically, we prefer our like food and steak format. Oh, never mind. He destroyed the entire. But really, you had to vomit blood all over the entire pile. That's what you had to do right now. We were supposed to share that with everybody, and now there's just the significant risk of biohazard problems. I realize that we're undead, but that doesn't mean that we don't have germ standards. Come on now, the health department is a real thing. It continues to exist whether or not we're zombies or not. I don't think I needed that extra knot at the end. I'm gonna be super honest right now. I don't think I needed that extra knot at the end. It's like that rope at gym class. Nobody needs that knot at the end. Meat sack, meat sack, antibodies, repulsive. Gather more zombie something. Oh, that's right. So in 30 seconds, bad things are gonna happen. The police show up and they decide to ride out on us super hard. They decide to bomb on us like suck a jive fools. And so let's go over here. Are there any people left or we get them all? I think we got them all. I actually think we've done a reasonably decent job of annihilating everybody. I don't know where the police pull up from either. Be careful. I can destroy vehicles if I want by clicking on them. The zombies will run in there and annihilate them. But the vehicles explode after the zombies like chew on them for a while. So who knew that when you chew on a car, it might actually explode. So if you're planning on doing any vehicular chewing, leave that 65 Mustang alone. It might blow up in your mouth. And it's not conducive to bodily... No! Jenkins! He was my favorite zombie! They shot Jenkins. These rat bastards are gonna die. And so here comes the cops. What we would prefer to do right now is ambush them right as they come around the corner because you want to get them logged down in combat so that they can't run away. Once they start taking damage, it continues like this long cycle of them never being able to get away. But up until you hit them the first time, they can just outkite you by running away. And so it can get a little bit irritating. It's a mechanic that can be frustrating, and now we get cop zombies. The other thing that I do want to point out is every single zombie, they stay the way that they were in life after you kill them. And so I like how you accumulate zombies of different jobs and different professions. As you go through the game, you have zombies in suits, cop zombies, SWAT team zombies, military zombies, zombies in sweaters, zombies in loafers, zombies in sperries if you're feeling especially stylish or you're planning on going out in the boat. Oh, we can kill this cop over here too. Alright, let's do as Ice Cube wills and head on, and head on over here. Did I say ice cube? I meant ice tea. Dear God. How did I mess that up? There we go. Alright. And you know what it is? It's because I just saw 22 Jump Street the other day. That's why I said ice cube. No! Apparently that counts as success. 
all my zombies were detonated and destroyed. You get these cool little animated features in between. I really, really like the backgrounds and whatnot. I'm hoping that at some point they manage to turn these into, I don't know, some sort of like moving animation or something and later on in development might be really rad. I do like the art style. I had a friend when I was growing up, he's a tattoo artist now and he used to do a lot of zombie art like this. That's what it reminds me. It makes me nostalgic. I think that's what sells it for me. Let's do mission number two in which we will learn how to use cannibal mode. Redneck Redemption. This one's a little bit more difficult. You've got to plan this one out. I remember playing this one for the first time and I struggled with it. And so what we need to do is we click on that and then we go over here and the only way we can defeat him is by tackling him. If you actually try and fight him the normal way, guess what? It ain't gonna work. You're gonna find yourself getting into trouble. And so we're gonna chew off his nibbly bits, all that glute work. It ain't gonna save you from us. Those gluteo steel are not impervious. Oh, and now we got medical staff coming in. I'm gonna try and convert as many of these people as I can. Because they start running around and then you gotta chase them, and so I'd rather grab them while they're all condensed in one area. Alright, so now we got EMT zombies. That's good, because EMTs always keep up on their cardio and their weightlifting, and so you know that zombie's gonna be a little bit stronger and more resilient than a lot of the other ones. Let's go ahead and beat up this one over here. Oh, we got more cops. Run away! Run away! No, we can't fight with cops right now. Get behind the wall! Run, you fools! Okay, so now we gotta get the cops. Here we go. Okay, this cop is surrounded. Oh my god, there's cops everywhere. I'm gonna cannibal mode him. We are rapidly losing zombies, and they're running off all over the place, too. Get out of the line of fire! Break line of sight! This mission is a lot more difficult than the last one, because you've actually got to, like, plant things out and use your cannibal mode appropriately. So at the end of the day, we came out with, like, six zombies. Not terrible. I don't know if we'll be able to complete the mission, because these missions are pretty challenging. They've got a very, very thin, like, threshold for you being able to complete them if you make mistakes. And mistakes were made right there, unfortunately. This zombie's still twitching. We might be able to get him back. No, nah, he's gone. He's dead, Jim. Let him go. Okay, so we've got- oh, we got seven zombies. Okay, I miscounted. Well, that's fine. Let's go ahead and I want to take these guys like so. Our final mission is to kill all the rednecks at the gas station who have, like, shotguns and things. And so we got to kind of corral these humans and make sure they don't cross the street. Let's go ahead and we're going to run laterally along the side of them. We're going to stay parallel with the human group. Ah, that one right there is going to run. And he didn't flinch when we hit him, either. That's bad. Oh, that human's still okay, too. That's okay. I'd rather have this one not running around, because if he decides to go across the street, it's going to be big, big, bad problems for us. Lots of bees involved. And you know when there's lots of bees involved, that the problem's probably gone up to the next order of magnitude. Jesus, how much health did this guy have? Million dollar man over here. But we will rebuild him as undead. Okay, and so now let's go back with a unified roar. And see if we can't take out the remainder of these humans. You can't break through these metal doors. These gray ones can't be broken through. But you can break through any door that's brown. And so just remember that for future reference. Some of the buildings are going to be accessible. Some of them are not. I'm hoping that when the game comes out, they're going to give you just like all the space you need to play the game however you want. Did he just flip me off? Who flips off a zombie? That's not the appropriate way to get our attention. That one's going to get away. She's going to make it across the street over to all of the rednecks with the guns. Let's go ahead and we're going to go around the block now. And we're just going to get everybody in the neighborhood that we can. We got another law enforcement official over here who needs to go. Goodbye, law enforcement official. And so now he is officially one of us. One of us. Let's go off down the street. We're not going to fight with them just yet because I think there are a bunch of people around the back right here. Yeah, that's what I thought. This game, you got to be perceptive. Scan around the map every now and again because if you don't actually get every single human in every mission, as we'll see coming up in tutorial mission number three, it gets very, very difficult to figure out how you're... It's almost like a little bit of a puzzle figuring out how you can turn enough people into zombies before you run out of humans. And so these people... Ah, they're all running the wrong direction. We might get ourselves into a bit of a... We need to keep them away from the garage door.
Okay, so we've got him cornered now. Nice. I didn't even plan to do that. I didn't even plan to do that, and yet there it is. Oh, she shoved her way by. Your zombies don't necessarily do the smartest thing all the time. Sometimes they just kind of chase the same person around nonstop. And so this is like one of the main things that I dislike, is just how it turns into a giant kite fest all the time. You can get faster zombies later on that like lock people down and keep them from running around like this, but you don't have them at this point in the game. And people that are get annoyed by being kiting, like if you hated being kited by hunters in World of Warcraft, like you just hate being kited, this game will probably drive you nuts. I'm just saying. It'll it'll probably keep you quite frosty and salty. Because this is essentially how every single altercation comes. The humans need to stop running a little bit earlier, I think. To make it a little bit less obnoxious and take a little bit less time. Just get him already. God. Alright. So our new zombie friend has joined the fold. Oh, we have a military zombie. Oh, never mind. He's in a cop outfit. Okay, I thought we had a military zombie. I was like, how did we get one of those in this mission? I have no idea how we got a military zombie so early. They aren't even supposed to be here yet. Something has gone wrong with the plan. I'm going to scan for a few more humans just in case. Oh, forgot a zombie. Come along. We don't want to leave Ned behind. I am aware that Ned is a female. Ned's parents were questionable at best. I think they were intoxicated at the time of Ned's naming. At the time of the bestowal of Ned's nomenclature. Let's go ahead and head around this way. We'll do something smart with our zombies. And good night. Seems like it'd be pretty awesome to be a zombie for a little while. Oh, there's somebody in the bathroom. I never noticed that before. He must have come out the last time I played this and just fought with me. So these guys have shotguns. That's really, really bad for us. That means that we are going to hurt when they decide to shoot us. We're going to hurt a lot. And so what we need to do is essentially... I'm going to try and bait these guys out here. With like one zombie. Err, look at me! Look at me, I'm a zombie! Come get me! For now, they seem content in, like, clicking on me. There we go. Ow! They shot my Zerba. And the mistake was made. Welcome to the horror movie. You didn't think zombies would... It's a ruse! It's a zombie ruse. Nobody expected us to be running high game strategy. I mean, not necessarily high game, I guess. Now we can just zerg our way to victory. It's just when you have amassed shotguns like that, you gotta be careful. You'll see what I mean. See, he just got one shot right there. The shotguns are pretty terrifying. They can be bad news for you. Alright, and so a few more go down. No! Victory! We have had success! And so there it is. We've managed to complete yet another tutorial mission. Let's go ahead and we'll complete the third today just so we can keep this as one episode. We'll keep it all nice and condensed so that you can see everything that the game has on offer. And then at the end I'll offer some of my thoughts as to whether or not you should actually support this game and purchase it. Mission number three, we get introduced to the speedy zombie. Now this mission is hard as hell. This mission took me a little while because there's like patrols and things like that and you've got to figure out how to do this properly. This one takes a little bit of work. And these SWAT guys, they are no joke. So I might actually fail at this. But I'm going to do my best to make sure that we get it on the first try. Okay, and so the goal, in essence, is to find the human with the appropriate genetic material so that we can create the speedy zombies. So that we can morph our genome. Let's go ahead and chew this guy up in the lobby room. He looked bored anyway, so we're just... Spru I'm, I'm, I'm helping him out right now. I'm sprucing up his living area. This lady shouldn't bother us. We don't want to go through that door. That's a terrible idea. Let's go ahead and get her. Now, these people will run, and they'll tell the cops, so I think he's probably going to run for the police officer. Oh, hell. Hopefully, they'll get this guy before he deals too much damage. Okay, so we've got a cop zombie already. That's good. The SWAT team zombies, they do have body armor or something like that. It makes them a little bit more resilient. I haven't tested it, but it seems like it would work that way. The next thing we need is if we come over here... The bus will stop off in a minute. It'll drop off like 10 people. Sometimes. People? Oh no, how come there's no people? It's supposed to drop off a busload of people. Well, that's bad. Let's go over here. 
<laughs> he said you think I can't take you. Take me where? Hopefully to a fancy dinner. Zombies don't get out much. Nobody ever invites us places. It's so disappointing. I mean, all we want to do is go to Red Lobster every now and again. Is that really too much to ask? But then the people of this world, they're just horribly, horribly, horribly arrayed against us. It's terrible. It's awful being a zombie. Now there are cops back here. And they're on patrol, so we gotta be careful, because if you pull the two of them right now, you're done for. That door closes once you aggro her, but she's gonna make it around the back side of the building. So we're not gonna catch her. We need to wait for the bus to arrive, because we need numbers. There's the bus. Did it drop anybody off? They're using the crosswalk sound. In Northern California, that's the sound that the crosswalks make. I don't know if they make that sound everywhere, but that's what they make in Northern California anyways. They go, pew, 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 like somebody's shooting a tiny little laser gun. I'm not going to waste any more time. Let's just let's go ahead and take out this cop. Okay, another one bites the dust, and as you can see, our meter is filling up over here. I hear footsteps, heavy footfalls, and yet I'm not seeing them anywhere. So the last time I played this, the bus stop dropped off like eight humans, at which point you could come down here and you could eat them all, and it gave you way more units. And I don't know if that's supposed to happen or if I just lucked out, but the bus stop does not appear to be dropping anybody off for me. Maybe I have to do a specific action. Let's go down here and find out. Anybody? This bus driver seems awfully nonchalant about the fact that there's a horde of undead outside of his bus that are just, like, hanging out. That's weird. I wonder if it's bugged. Because the last time I played this, that was how you got enough units to actually beat the game, is that this came and it dropped off, like, five more people. And then once you had about ten zombies, you could overwhelm the people that were inside. But as it stands right now, I don't think we can get away with it. I think we could get close. But I don't think we can actually do it with this many people. I think we need a few more. So I'm a little bit weirded out about the fact that the same thing didn't happen this time. Because I was relying on it for the strategy. Oh well. I guess not. But yeah, the bus stops. Typically they drop people off. It decided not to this time, which is a major hitch in my strategy. But I don't know. We'll sort it. I don't think you can tackle these guys with like the rampage mode or whatever. Oh, they've ID'd us. So we gotta decide how we want to do this. If I just want to bum rush him, maybe? Like, maybe you see if you can tackle that one. Alright, well we lost two zombies in exchange for two SWAT zombies. That does leave us free to run the outside though. So let's check around a few more corners. We're gonna go get this lady, obviously. Or this guy? Is it a guy or a lady? Oh, it's a dude. Okay. Alright, so we'll run him down. We'll kick him in the back a few times. Down he goes. And so now we're sitting at seven zombies. I still don't think we have enough to run the inside. I just don't think we're going to make it. So the guy that we need is in the back in a holding cell. He's actually in prison already. Since the bus has still not dropped anybody off, I guess this is all we're going to be able to work with. Kick the door down. Okay, so we got a few more in here. No. No. Oh, you idiots. The pathfinding is very, very bad as the game is right now. The pathfinding is super stoops. That's one of the big problems that I see with the game thus far is that the pathfinding, it needs to be adapted pretty heavily. Things get tripped over each other. For example, if you order all these zombies to the door, they'll sometimes just get stuck around the door and they can't go in. Then again, it's alpha. 
I'm just trying to disclose things that you may notice as you play through these first couple missions like I did. And you'd be like, why did my zombies keep doing dumb stuff? Well, I guess you could rationalize it that they're zombies. No. Okay, run them. Whatever. That's even better. Go off this way. Oh, he's coming through that door over there. And so there it is, as we get kited around. I'm gonna, t I'm gonna really, really strongly suggest that you target swap a lot. Like, just don't chase people around like I did right there. Just swap whenever you're near somebody. We've also got this door over here with more people in the office area, so let's go ahead and grab them. And add them to our lovely little troop of zombified mass murderers. Okay, this zombie gets started on the door. We're gonna have like a multi Hey, the door. <laughs> this lady thought she was safe. She's like, I'm just gonna stay in my little cubicle. Nope, you will join us. You have no choice. You will become zombie. Alright, so we've got enough zombies now. The reason we need zombies is because the next phase of the mission is kind of a pain. You'll see what I mean. Let's make sure all these rooms are clear. Make sure there's nobody sitting on the turret here. This should allow us to get into the holding cell. Yeah, there it is right there. Because, don't know. They leave the prison cells open. I don't know. It's convenient, I suppose, for the mission. <laughs> the premium, or the paramount in jail cell efficiency. Just leaving your doors open. Ah, success! We can create speed, zombies! Now is when the game gets interesting. So we'll go ahead and start morphing some of these guys into speed zombies. And what you'll see is it takes two zombies and it combines them into these kind of Nosferatu looking vampire creatures. And they are really, really good. They tear stuff up. Like, you wouldn't think they're as awesome as they are, but oh, they totally are. They're amazing. And so now, in order to survive the next phase, we need to make ourselves a whole bunch of speed zombies, which we now have. We also need to put ourselves in a location where we can fight with the enemy a little bit more efficiency or with a little bit more efficiency and they do a lot more damage too so keep that in mind they hurt a lot like they take people out quick style all the while still converting people to our lovely righteous zombified cause although the cops do appear to be making a pretty good fight right now There we go, we got the last one. Success! And so there it is, everything that the game has to offer right now. There is a skirmish map, if we take a look. So there's a skirmish map right here where it'll throw you in and you can just play with like the few units and stuff that are in the game. There's also this alpha test mode right here where it just puts you in the middle of a street and you can spawn humans, you can spawn zombies, you can spawn like the little set pieces like cars and things like that and you can play around with stuff. And this is meant specifically for bug testing and so they put all of the objects in here and you just run around testing them. And so you can blow up cars, you can spawn hordes and hordes and hordes of zombies to fight hundreds of humans, whatever you want to do. It's basically the sandbox kind of Gmod mode of the game. The game that we've been taking a look at today is Undead Overlord. It went up on Steam earlier this week in its early access form. If you want to support the game, as I said previously, don't support this game because of the content that's in it right now. Support it because you find the interesting, the ideas to be interesting and also intriguing, and you think that when this game finishes developing, it'll be awesome. I say that because as of right now, when you purchase this game, you're going to find yourself essentially getting a tutorial and a sandbox mode, and that's about it. There's not a conclusion to the storyline. You're not going to get any answers as to what's going on. Essentially, you're going to get to play around with some of the toys for a little while to convince you whether or not you like the mechanics, and then you're going to be sent on your way until the game begins to patch. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here today as we play Undead Overlord. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and hi-do.